Greetings everybody, I'm Nick DiVirgilio and today's video is on this Welch Tuning Systems Epiphany series snare drum. Welch Tuning Systems was founded in 2015 by Mr. Samuel Welch. Samuel is a working drummer and also a blacksmith, so building and creating things are in his DNA. While doing gigs and teaching, Samuel had an idea of a different way to tune the drums. A whole different system. So Samuel teamed up with a couple of friends and designed the system that comes on all WTS drums. There are no traditional tension rods to bring up the tension of the heads. The stainless steel aircraft cable that runs through all of the pulleys and is connected to a single point tuning mechanism, and when you turn the big key, it brings up the tension of every lug evenly. And when I say the word lug, I'm talking about the pulleys that are at the point of where a typical lug would be on a typical snare drum. And when you turn the big tuning key, it's bringing up the tension of both the resonant and batter head at the exact same time. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to change the heads and to put the wire through the pulley system in just a second here, but first, let's go through all of the details of this Epiphany snare drum. The size is 7.5 by 13 inches, and it's a cool size because the depth is enough to get a big fat sound, but the 13 inch diameter gets you a big bright cracking sound as well. The shell is all maple and seven plies thick. The drum has 45 degree bearing edges, die cast hoops, a very nice and easy to use throw off, an adjustable butt plate, and of course, the WTS proprietary wire tension tuning system. There are no typical lugs screwed into the drum shell, only the throw off, the butt plate, the vent holes, the badge, and the tuning system. This gives you about a 90% reduction in shell mounted hardware that reduces the weight of the drum and opens up the drum shell for a nice clear tone. So you heard me play at the beginning of this video. I'm gonna play some more for you, show you how easy it is to tune the drum up and down, the tone of the drum, talk about it. I'm gonna change it up a little bit too, so let's get into it right here. Right now the snare wires are off and it has a nice warm sound with just no snare wire buzz at all. Here we go. That's up at a high tuning, but if I just turn the key, you get a bit totally different sound. I'm sorry, but that is really cool. To be able to change the tone of the drum by just turning the key, it's totally unique and different than anything else out there on the market. Now, all WTS drums come with the exact same tuning system. So whether you get a snare drum or a full kit, uh, you're gonna have the same system on that drum. I'm gonna keep the drum at the low tuning here and start with the big fat snare drum sound. Check it out. Now, it's low and it's wide open, there's no dampening at all, but if I take a little bit of dampening at the low tuning, you get an even thuddier sound. Check this out. You can go all kinds of places. The drum is outfitted right now with an Evans G12. You get stock heads when you buy the WTS snare drum, and those are fine, but different head combinations, as with any drum, will make a huge difference in the sound. So pick your favorite drum head and put it on this drum, and you can go all kinds of places. Dampening works well. Uh, big fat snare drum from Big Bang would work well on this to give you that fat snare drum sound as well. Uh, some duct tape, your wallet, you know, whatever you're gonna do to get you that dampening will work but you just get so much variety of sound with the tuning system and some head combinations, a little bit of dampening, you get like a ton of different sounds out of one drum. Such a cool, huge variety of sound up at the high pitch now as well. Now I've got a big piece of dampening here. This is a lot, and as you move it towards the center of the drum, it's gonna really deaden up the drum a lot. Put it wherever you like, but just the fact that you can do all this with one drum is pretty cool. 
Okay, now you've heard the drum a little bit, low tuning, high tuning. Now I'm gonna take the drum off the stand and put it on a table, because it's way easier to do it on a table, and show you how easy it is to change the heads and to replace the wire if you need to. Also, so you know how you're hearing this drum, it's being recorded by an Earthworks SR25 microphone above the drum, that's the only mic I have here in the room, going into a UA Apollo X8P and on into Pro Tools. All right, the drum is on the table and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to change the heads and the wire if you need to do so. Now Samuel tells me that there's always two questions he gets asked whenever they're talking about the WTS drums. One, how easy it is to change heads, I'm gonna show you that right now. And the second question, it's one I asked him pretty straight off was, has the cable ever broken? Um, and he's never had a broken cable. I asked that because as drummers, right, the snare drum is in between our legs as we're sitting down. You don't want an aircraft cable snapping, you know, onto your thigh and in your crotch area, all that kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a, a reasonable question to ask, but it's never happened. These are aircraft grade cables that can take super high tension. So it's nothing you'll ever have to worry about. All that being said, let's get into it. First thing to do is turn the snare drum over. It's a lot easier to do it this way because when you get to the tuning system, it's way easier to get to the cable from the bottom than from the top. First thing I wanna do here since we're talking about changing the heads is take off the snare wires. So just grab your key. This is really the only thing you're gonna need a, dr a typical drum key for. Loosen it at the butt plate and then at the throw off side. And there you go. Now, just start loosening the wire. While I'm doing this, let's talk about the tuning key here real quick. If you've ever picked up a bass guitar, this key will look very familiar to you. It's about the same size as a bass tuning key on a Fender or anything like that. And you can also get a automatic key winder that's battery powered, like a drill sort of thing, and do this with that instrument. You don't need to do this by hand. It takes a little longer by hand. If you have a tool like that, that's great. And uh, it will work and keep the drum safe. Just wanted to let you know that. But since we're doing this by hand, just turn and turn and turn. I'm taking my thumb and couple of fingers and pulling the wire towards me as it gets looser. And you just gotta keep going until it's all the way off. All right, I've loosened up the wire quite a bit as far as it can go. You'll notice that all of the pulleys are really loose now. That's what you want. There's three holes in the back of the tuning system here. One for the cable to go through, then there's a channel and another hole directly on the other side of the channel. You bend the cable over the channel and into the other hole and that's what holds it on. So all you have to do is just pull it out and you have the one end of the cable right there. Pull it out the other end. Now it's free and you just pull it out of all the pulleys around the drum. There you go. Now the cable's all the way out. There's one pulley left. Now, how the cable stays into the tuning system is pretty cool, and it's very reminiscent of a guitar string. There's a ball on one end, when you pull it into the hole there, the ball is big enough to go in the hole, but the hole gets smaller in the middle of the tuning peg. It can't go through, so you just pull the string until the ball is all the way in there and seated, and you're good to go. Now, since this wire has already been on the drum, there's some bends in the cable already because it's been on the tuning system. When you get a replacement wire, there's no bends at all. It's fresh, and you start from scratch. But these wires will really last forever. Unless they get frayed, you're never gonna really need to change, so. We're gonna start with this wire again. Again, just pull it all the way through, get the ball into the tuning system, and we're good to start. But if you're gonna change the heads, of course, with the wire all the way off, just pull the top off, change your heads, and you're good to go. Same with the bottom, just like that. This is a good time also to give you a shot of the rim and all the pulleys when it's not connected to the drum. So, assuming you have brand new heads, Put it down on the bottom rim. Just get it in there like that. Now we're gonna put the resonant head back on. One thing to think about and to show you here is the throw off and the butt plate line up with one of the pulleys. Grab your resonant head. This one's real easy because I can see where the snare wires were already on the head so I can line it up pretty simply here. 
just like that. Then when you get the bottom rim, make sure, of course, that you have the, the slots for the snare wires to go through lined up with your throw off and butt plate. Get the pulleys out of the way and drop the rim right on. Now you'll have to make a couple adjustments while you're doing this, but you wanna have the pulleys offset from each other all the way around the drum. So you're gonna get that V shape with the, with the cable once it's wired all the way through. The next thing to point out before we put the wire through is where to put the tuning mechanism. One of the pulleys is just about the right side of the tuning mechanism. The other one is about where the screws are. Again, the pulleys are offset, but this way you'll have an angle of the cable going into the top pulley and an angle going into the bottom pulley as well. All right, let's get into putting the cable through. I'm gonna start at the bottom, so put it through the tuning mechanism so the cable comes out the bottom like this. And you basically just wire it through like you're kind of putting your tennis shoe laces on. So down the bottom and then up through the top and down through the bottom and so on all the way around the drum. It is pretty simple to do and once you kind of get the hang of it, it goes faster and faster each time. Now think about if you're gonna change the top and bottom heads of a typical drum and take off all 10 tension rods from every lug on the bottom and the top of each drum, how long that takes with just your tuning key in your hands if you don't have a drill with one of the drum key drill bits on it, you know, it takes, that could take a good amount of time. So I don't think this is any more time than doing that. In fact, it could be less once you really get the hang of this and get the speed down. Right, there you go. The cable's all the way around. Now I just have to reconnect it to the tuning mechanism. So I have the mechanism turned so I can see the ball end of the wire and the two holes, not the channel side. So I'm gonna start by putting the wire through one of the holes. getting it all the way through. I can pull the other end from the bottom. Now, I will start turning the tuning mechanism so I can get to the other side where the channel is. Now, take the top of the wire up through and put the other end of the wire or cable through the other hole that's on the other side of the channel. So what you wanna do is get rid of some of the slack. So I'm just pulling with my thumb just to make it a little bit tighter when you start tuning from the very beginning. And then just turn the tuning key. So it's really loose, but now check out the, you'll hear the tone of the drum going up as I tune the key. It's tensioning every lug or pulley at the exact same tension on the bottom and the top. And it's really that simple. They suggest that you have the wire or the cable going around the rod here three times, so you prevent slippage that way. So three times you have plenty of cable to do that with. And there you go. Now reinstall the snare wires and you're ready to rock. So let's do that real quick and we'll have our completed snare. Drum. All right. You will need a drum key for this bit. Take one off, put the strap through, put the lug screw back in. Kind of get it sort of going. I turn, I take the uh, strainer off Sort of get it set in place. Don't make it totally tight, but just a little bit tight. Now let's do the butt plate side. Take one off. Strap through, back on, lug screw. Okay. Now let's center up the snare wires and we're done. This is the exact same process you would do with a regular snare drum. So the snare wires go on the exact same way. Check your tension, get it wherever you like. What's really cool having the adjustable butt plate side is you can adjust the tension on both sides of the drum. That's really great. Turn the snare over, grab your drumstick, see where you're at. Get the tuning wherever you want. Adjust your wires. I like them a little bit looser. And just mess with it until you get it exactly where you want. There you go. I encourage you to check out the WTS Steve Pruitt brushed brass signature drum that we also carry here at Sweetwater. They are very cool instruments with a unique way to tune the drum. If you want any more information, just contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Nick DiVirgilio. Cheers. <laughs>